He went home to be with the Lord this morning uh, around 5 a.m. Uh, got a text from Hoss, but we know, so their families together now. I don't know, obviously, right now with the arrangements and stuff. As soon as we do, we will let you know. And uh, uh, he's at peace. He's asleep. He's healed. He wins. I know it's a little bit of a loss, but, but he wins. He's in the presence of the Lord. He'll be at his body, be present with the Lord, and guess what? No more cancer, no more pain. We've, we've all talked about that. But it is a time of mourning. We lose someone that we love. You know, it's, it's all right to mourn. And we do those kind of things. But uh, pray for them, rejoice with them. Uh, during this time, we will let you know uh, more information as we get, because uh, I'm sure the service will be planned and uh, we don't know the details yet. So. so to our message, uh, this morning, how do we mend a broken heart? Couldn't, <laughs> couldn't fit perfect time. And, you know, before all this, you know, we've been praying for Steve. We've been, we pray for a lot of folks, and we have folks that are broken, folks that are hurt. And as a pastor, you know, you want people to be on the mend. You want them to be healed. You want them to be delivered. And I know some people look at the pastor and say, boy, pastor, all you give me is the Bible. All you give me is the Word of God. Well, Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the Word of God. We have the Word of God, and that's where our faith lies, and that's where our healing is. And for pastors to get through even what they get through, we have to be in the Word. That's where we go for encouragement. That's where we go for strength and exhortation. I read an article, uh, and Karen actually read the article, too, that pastors are the loneliest people in church. All except for Iron Faith Church. <laughs> and... And that's a blessing. In most cases, I'm sad to say, pastors get separated from the congregations for many ways, so they go through different things. And, but when pastors, even if they're in that lonely state, they're successful because they, they stay in the Word of God. They know God has a plan. And they trust His Word, and they, they believe His Word. And that's what we have. So I know sometimes, you know, we drive people nuts with the Word, but you know something, that's where our faith lies. That's what we're called to do is proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ or share the word of God. And turn with me to Psalm 61. 
people ask me sometimes, you know, how do you deal with this? I go to the Word. And a lot of times, to the Psalms. You know, we know King David wrote most of the Psalms, and mm -hmm. that guy went through a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we know some of it was self-inflicted, but he lost children. He lost an empire, he lost a kingdom for a time. You know, he went through tough times. But even though he did, he always turned back to God. He went to where his strength lied. And that's not always in the encouragement of friends. Because what do friends do with us sometimes? Sometimes they give us what we really don't need. Sometimes we don't need someone to feel sorry for us. We don't need somebody to pity us. We don't need to get into the pity parties like we do sometimes. Oh, woe is me. I'm going through such a tough time. And your friends come around and say, oh, I, I understand. You know, it must be terrible going what you're going through. What would happen if you went to him and said, man, you know, let me tell you something. You ever stop and look around? I can almost assure you someone's going through a worse time. My dad used to, used to use this saying on me all the time. Because I was a typical kid. I griped because I didn't have everything. You know, back in my day, Converse All-Stars, the campus ones, I mean, you were bad. You walked around with Converse All-Stars, I mean, you were pimping, baby. You didn't need Nikes and all that kind of stuff, because you had Converse. The biggest battle you had was, do I get the white ones or the black ones? Pink. 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 My dad, my dad, that kids are good enough. No. Now you got to try to get a guy that was born in 1912 to understand that no damn kids aren't good enough. <laughs> you know, no, you got to have those things. But my father's response was, he said, you know, he said I complained about not having any shoes, but I seen a man who didn't have any feet. And that didn't resonate with me until I got older. And when I would go through things sometimes, that saying alone sometimes would hit me. You know, I, I never had it so bad. Most times I had it bad because I chose to have it worse than what I needed to have it. And when I got to the Word, I'm like, you know, when I'm hurting and when I'm down, where I go to, I tend to turn to the signs. God wants to hear from us. He wants to comfort us. But we have to have the faith to come before Him and lay it at His throne. Amen. Sometimes we just got to come and stay there. But we're looking for that almost that instant gratification. I know we bring that up, but we do. Sometimes we want instant comfort. We want instant peace. But sometimes you have to be instantly patient before God to get that. But even the psalmist, when he wrote, turn me to Psalm 61. There's like eight verses, but I love this. I love this psalm. And it's a lament. The psalmist is crying out. You know, going after God. And I, I think sometimes we're afraid to do that. When we're hurting, when we're down, when, when something's happening, we need to go after God. Just like the woman who had the issue of blood. She said, these trials are not going to stop me. I have a need. She tried all the people, all the doctors, spent all of her money. And all she said is, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know how many of us, when we're hurt, do we just reach out and say, Lord, I just want to touch the hip. I just want a little teach, touch of your garment this morning. Amen? Psalm 61, starting verse 1. Hear my cry, O oh God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I call to you in my heart is strength. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Prolong the life of the king. May his years endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before who? Before God. So will I ever sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day after day. Let's pray. Father, we just come before you. Father, for the short time that we take on Sundays. Father, to, do, to, to kick our week. <coughs> we don't come before you just 
to hear a message or sermon. But Father, we need a jump start. Father, for the week. Something to encourage us, Lord, to, to come before you daily for our needs. Father, in your word, you promised that you would meet our needs in every way, from clothing to food to shelter. Father, it takes faith. But it takes faith in your word. It takes faith in trusting you, as your word says. Your word says you will never leave us nor forsake us. And Father, we thank you for that. We stand on that promise. Father, we come before you now just humbly. We thank you and praise you for the home going of Steve Pisek. Father, as I've said before, that was the jump start for this church to be the praying church that we become. And Father, we've seen so many things, so much victory in our prayer lives. And Father, we don't want to look at this as less of a victory, but more of a victory. Father, your word promises us that you have gone before us and prepared a place for us that we can't even imagine. Help us to be like Paul and strive for that upward call. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love this because first of all, it starts out it says, Hear my cry, O God. You know, the new King James, the King James, so hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Man, I'm sorry. the angels rejoice. I'm sorry. <laughs> Stephen must have just arrived. Amen. There you go. <laughs> I love it. I blame you. I, I told Steve uh, more a little earlier that we needed to have a hand laying out a hand service for his bride, maybe. No, it was the complete opposite. Oh. It was him that needed the hand. Oh my goodness. <laughs> See the marital bliss we have here? <laughs> but hear my cry, oh God. He wants us. He wants our cry. He wants us to go. It's all right. Sometimes we don't feel that, that we have a privilege to do that. And it's all right. God knows our tears. He knows our hurts. He knows our pains. He wants those things. You know what that scripture says? Be still and know that I am God. It's not just a quiet time. It's coming before God, giving him your petitions. He wants to carry you through. Our problem is what? We want to help him carry us through. We do. Lord, I'm still hurt. I'm still broken. Okay, but what have we done about that? You know, you've heard me say this before. People will come to the altar and be prayed for. And I want to be delivered. I want to be healed. I want to be set free. But they get right up from that altar and they carry that baggage right back to the chair with them. you got to leave it at the throne of God. If you want Him to do what He wants to do for you, you have to trust Him enough to leave it with Him. Get on down the highway. We don't do that. My granddaughter, Olivia, is going to be 19 years old, and she's like most of you young girls. She has boy problems. <laughs> now, <laughs> wait, who knows? What? <laughs> now, I love his shirt. No one holds back. <laughs> is that Marky? <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> that was a good thing I was married because me and Lois would have been engaged last night. <laughs> Boy, she drug me across the chair, give me a hug, and whoa! Hey. Yes, yeah, she did too. Right in front of my wife. <laughs> Richard's looking at me, saying, "Like, Angie would have killed me right there on the spot." <laughs> <laughs> That's another kind of crazy pastor. But she doesn't share with me the things she shares with her grandma. Her grandmother is a little more passionate. And she talks to her a little bit more about these things. But she mentions these things to her papa. I'm like, wait, you need to wait. And she looks at me like, wait, what do you mean wait? I said, because if you wait on God, he will give you the best person for your life. You need to wait. And I said, bottom line is, your God may give you the best person. Papa may not like him anyhow. <laughs> it's more important what God gives you. God gave me an announcement one time. She's talking to Grandma. I said, what's going on? 
Sure, well, you don't like Mason anyway, Papa. I said, no, I don't. <laughs> he's not giving me a reason to trust him. And we've seen things that he's done. I'm like, why would I, you know, he needs to get saved, but he hasn't given me a reason to trust him, you know? I am some old, trusty, old school kind of guy. I still open the door for my bride. I get mad at her. She doesn't wait. I do those things. So I expect no less from anyone else. And I expect no less from any guy with you guys. Just seen when, when she graduated. We're standing out there and we're like, whoa, oh, oh, wait. Don't get in that limousine. But that young man come up and open it. And the boys are like, what? I'm supposed to do that? And I'm thinking, yeah, you're not taking my granddaughter to the prom. Guess what? They opened the door. And not one of them jumped in first. You ever seen that? I always love that. Pouring down rain, what do you do? You jump in the car and hit the unlock button so she'll be in quick. <laughs> I mean, that's sacrifice, isn't it? All right, honey, boom, it's our time to get in there. We don't have a God that's like that. You know, we come under the shelter of his wings, he covers us. He takes us through those times of trial and hurt and pain, and he wants to carry us. That's why those scriptures are in there. Come on to me, all you labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But some of us like the stress. And he doesn't want us to be stressed. Be anxious for nothing but everything. With thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And what do you get out of that? The peace of God that passes understanding. Who so guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Man, the blessings you get from just waiting on God, crying out to Him, laying your petitions before Him, saying, Lord, I'm not going to do another thing. Till I feel your touch. Till I feel your go ahead. Man. What a new revelation, huh? That's his old Bible. No new revelation in there. And he says, hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. It's like you're telling God, oh, stop. I know, God, there's a lot of people praying to you right now. Stop, but listen to mine. That's pretty brazen. But isn't this what the psalmist is saying? Hear my cry, oh God, attend unto my prayer. It's almost kind of a selfishness, isn't it? Lord, I, I tell you what I'll do. I'll pray for everybody else if you just listen to me right now. Close your ears off to everybody else because I'll pray. That's being unselfish. That's what God wants you to say. Lord, oh, guess what that means? You got me. I know that. So guess what? I'm going to stop praying for me. Pray for everybody else because I know you got me. That's what the psalmist is saying. Is it all right to pray for you? Yeah, that's not what I'm saying. But sometimes we pray for us a lot, don't we? Oh, Lord. I need, I want, I have to. And God's saying, no, you don't, you don't. You want the best? Wait on me. Wait on me. Do it my way just for a change. And what he wants you to see is if your way isn't working, what do you have to lose to try God's way? I did my uncle's funeral. And uh, my uncle had his funeral. He got to say, my, uh, another uncle led him to the Lord. Now, you have to know my uncle. Ed. He's a Polish guy and, and nothing against him, but I want to tell you something. This guy never dressed to please. Never dressed to please. You would have thought that he was as homeless as homeless could be. He wore these sweatpants, looked like he climbed under a car 47 times in. He had this plaid shirt on with the pockets hanging down to here, full of cigarettes here, papers over here, ink pen, unbuttoned down to here, chest hanging out. He didn't have a chest anymore. I'm not sure why he wanted his shirt unbuttoned like that. I don't even unbutton my shirt like that anymore. But my uncle didn't care. He'd sit out in his front porch. He could be snowing and blowing. He'd be sitting out there, and he just lived life. I went to this funeral, and... I thought I was being extremely distressed. I wore a suit. Yeah, I just couldn't. I just couldn't proceed. I'd take my tie off. I had half the people that were taking their tie off. I said, I can't have you change your suit. But I said, this is not our way. I mean, he got saved. He loved the Lord. But you know something? If he was alive right now, what would he want the most? Having a good time. 
And he didn't want us all bound up. So I took my towel from the funeral home and I threw it across the floor. And I had some of the Catholic people who were like, <laughs> like, I, like they wouldn't the preach to show up. So I could immediately go to confession and get straight down. <laughs> they had other people like, you're right. This is not what's important. Sometimes we get dressed up for the wrong occasion. But when we're before God, we don't have to impress Him. We don't have to dress up. And it's not selfish to say, Lord, please listen to me right now. I need you to hear me. I need to know that you're hearing my voice. That's what the psalmist is saying. He said, from the end of the earth. You know what that means? No matter where. It doesn't make any difference. He's not going to wait until he's home in his closet necessarily. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto you. Whatever expense, he's just going to cry out to God. And his heart is faint. What do you think the five seconds are going through right now? Anyone that's lost somebody, when your heart is faint, when your heart is broken, when your heart is most weak, that is the time to come before the living God. Why? Because you're going to put you on a solid foundation. Lead me to the rock. That what? That gets me out of the way. Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. I love that song. Hear my cry, O oh God. Attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That is higher than I. And that's exactly what that means. That's the time when you just get out of the way and put God in that place. That's when you get the comfort and healing. That's when you know when the right guy comes in on point number <laughs> These poor girls. I love our girls. I'm going to tell you something. People think I love our girls. You know, we have some great girls in here. They just got to know they're great girls. But they just need to go before God and say, Lord, I know I'm going to wait. <clears throat> True story. Let me tell you a story. Thank you, Lord, for giving me. I have a nephew. I did his wedding. He was like uh, 40 years old or better when he got married. Virgin. A male virgin? What? When I got a chance to talk, I, re- I was astounded. I'm his uncle. He wanted his uncle to marry him now that I could. And I'm sitting there talking with he and Ann. And he says, Uncle Randy, I swear to God, I got him before, uh, before God. So I, I've never been with him. And I'm looking at him thinking, what's your last name? And I made him spell it for him make sure there were two T's in it. I was, I was wrong. That's not what I'm saying. I'm like, wow. I was impressed. He served God. He was going, met his bride on a mission trip in Alaska. When's the last time you've been to Alaska? <laughs> Single guys up there just waiting to get married. I'm like, <laughs> but he went to Alaska on a mission trip, saw Anne, they fell in love almost immediately. He got married. Waited on God. Can you imagine? Man, I seen Karen. I wanted to get married the other day. I'm like, boy, I married Karen. We got married. Her mother had us married in two weeks. <laughs> and she got to know me. <laughs> so when everybody brags about Karen, how smart she is. <laughs> <laughs> she has the same thing. <laughs> Lead me to the rocks, and for you have been my refuge and a strong tower. And what that means is, is he remembers and he recognizes the fact that God has been his, his caregiver, his refuge, his safe haven. The second, when you truly come into the presence of God, you feel the safety. Of God. You feel the security for a change. It's just coming before you, laying your tears out there, and saying, Lord, set me on solid ground. I'm tired of slipping in the sand. Tired of slipping on the ice of life. But Lord, I know you have something better. You are my strong tower. You're my refuge. You're my safe haven. We talk about that all the time. You know, no weapon formed against us who prosper. But yet, 
Sometimes we let the devil just beat us to death, don't we? We let those demons come against us. And what does the word say? You know, resist the devil. And he must flee. Even the demons believe and tremble. Now, if the demons are afraid of the name of Jesus Christ, why don't we stand on the power of God? Why don't we use our faith and say, Lord, I'm not going to accept this. In Jesus' name, I plead the blood over this, and it's a done deal, and move on. But a lot of times we don't do that. And we give the devil more credit than what he's due. Sometimes it's not so much the devil just attacking us, and we're opening doors for him to attack us. Amen? And what's the Bible tell us? Put on the whole armor of God that you can what? Stand against the wiles, the lies of who? The devil. And who eats our lunch most of the time in the faith? Satan. For some or another, we take a chunk of armor off. You know, we don't get into words, so we take the breastplate of righteousness off. We take the, 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 the shot off. We take the sword and put it away. And we we're unarmed. We're walking out there unarmed. We wonder, why is this happening? What is going on? Because you're not in here. You're not trusting the Word of God. You're not in the Word of God. We bust on you guys about memorizing the Word of God. Why? So when you come under those attacks, you, come under, you know what you have to stand on. You can plead the blood of Jesus. You can stand on Ephesians 6. Well, I'm putting on the whole armor of God. You can't come against me, devil. I'm going to resist you and claim power in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to flee. You have no place here. It's probably something we used to, we need to do in the church in the first place. Before we walk in here, we need to rebuke Satan first and foremost. Because one of you comes in here and is stinking with a stinking attitude, you carry a little devil out of your shoulder. A little demon in here. And guess what that little demon does? Oh, Ashley's having a struggle with beep. He jumps over on Ashley. Ashley's struggling, so all of a sudden she starts feeling more down. She's not listening to the message because all of a sudden she's got these problems starting to rise in her head. Her sister Devin's feeling a little bit down. That little demon goes, Beep! He jumps over there. The next thing you know, this whole half of the church, if you ask them what the sermon was about, they're like, Oh, Pastor, I was just down. Yeah, I don't have a boyfriend. My car was broke. And Mom was late getting us to church. And I, I, you know. He's praying for the right man. That's right. But here's the top part of our singles. We're going to have to bring the guy here for approval. Come on. That's right. <laughs> but we get distracted. Distraction is not of God. The word says what? He does things decently and in order in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. When there's confusion, when there's upheaval, that's not God. But if you know the word of God, guess what you do? You cry out to him. Because you know God is able to put you back on the right track. He's able to get you focused. He's able to mend a broken heart that you might be carrying longer than you need to. We need to mourn when we lose a lost one. But we can't get lost in mourning. There's a time that, a time that you have to get on and start having church again. Amen? You hang on to the memories, the good memories of that person that you lost. Because guess what? If they're in heaven... What are they doing? We're the ones, if there were tears in heaven, they're weeping for us because we're stuck down here. So we can't be worrying about them. We need to get on our life. We need to get excited because one day, guess where we're going to be? Reunited again. And we'll be dancing on the streets of glory. Amen? We'll be coming before God with no more pain. No more tears. No more limping. No more arthritis. No more back pain. No more back pain. We can't imagine that because we're so engulfed in that kind of stuff. It consumes us. No more leg braces. No more knee surgeries. No more back surgeries. Nothing. I used to tease Bill Tim. Bill Tim used to talk about his body and stuff like that. I said, man, Bill, Jesus has promised you a new body. A glorified body. Every one of us men are going to walk into heaven looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> uh, I think I have a good one. <laughs> I think better for the women. Come on. Luke Rigno? <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Randy? <laughs> I, 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 I
struggle more now? Do I need to shave before I go to heaven? Is it going to matter? No. Do I need to be bald? Do I need to have hair? No. no. Let me tell you something. The Bible said, baby, when you get there, it ain't going to matter. We're going to be in such a spirit of praise and wish not going to matter. It's not going to matter. That's what God wants us to see. Paul said in Philippians, for me to die is gain. I think about that. I do. There's a lot of times I'm not ready. I shared that with you. I'm like, I'm not ready yet. But I read that scripture and Paul's like, man, for me to die is gain. The longer I'm here, I'm losing. But if I die, I gain. But to live is Christ. So I'm thinking, wow, that sounds like a win-win to me. To die again, to live, is Christ. That's a win-win. When's the last time you thought about that? When's the last time you truly said, man, Lord, I'm not a loser. Well, that, that's the astounding revelation there, isn't it? I'm not a loser. My kids may not be doing what I want them to do, but I'm not a loser. They answer for themselves. Amen? I'm a child of the king. Claim that thing. That doesn't mean go out by Rolls Royce. If you're a joint heir with Jesus Christ, you see how special you are in God's eyes? Why wouldn't he want you to come before him and spend that precious time with him so he could put you on the right foundation that you could build your life on something solid instead of sinking sand? All other ground is sinking sand. Like that song too, huh? Mm -hmm. On precious solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. What does it say? All other, other ground, ground is sinking sand. So if you are not on the foundation, on the rock of Jesus, you're sinking. So now you know that if you're struggling, you're going through problems, you're on sinking sand. Some of you got a foot on the rock and you're going like, and you're just hanging out for dear life. That's not Jesus. That's not where he wants you. He doesn't want you to stay sorrowful. He doesn't want you to stay. He says he heals the brokenhearted. He heals the brokenhearted. Man, we got hours. I can just wait. That's what I like about the, the Pentecostal churches, you know. Ever seen a clock in the Pentecostal church? Nope. I had a look at my phone on Friday. <laughs> Yeah. I think I think if Jesus was still here, I think everybody walked through the door with a cell phone on their pant pocket would catch on fire. <laughs> poof, poof. Can you see? Can you see our girls? Ah! Yeah, right. Especially this one. Yeah. 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 I know. I'm not going to mention any names, but Julie. Oh, 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 oh that ain't right. Really? Yeah. Even my wife and I were in the car the other night and got laughed at. I was thinking, no, I'll never do that. We're sitting in the car and we're both going. She was nice now, you don't have to just slide it. So it's easy for us old guys with our hands aren't working like So I'm like I'm like this, Karen's over going. All of a sudden we look up and we see these people go. <laughs> You know, so say people I busted on before about having a cell phone in here. <laughs> they walk out, they walk in, get up, go to the bathroom with a cell phone. You can't even go to the bathroom without a cell phone in your ear. <laughs> what if you're what if you're FaceTiming? <laughs> yeah. FaceTime is when they can see you. <laughs> But we allow those things to distract us. Sometimes when we're in fellowship with God, things distract us. Don't they? We're sitting down. We open the Word. We come before God. We hear His cry. All of a sudden, we feel this odd vibration on the table. <laughs> you turned it off because you want time with God. But all of a sudden, there's a vibration. You're like, okay, I'm not an exercise machine. What's vibrating? Oh, my phone, i got to answer it. Excuse me, Lord. And then we wonder why God didn't hear our prayer. Think about it. Come on, guys. Even sometimes when you come before God, put the stupid thing away. If we truly want God to hear our petitions, put it away. 
Turn the vibration off. Take your time. That's why I get up early, early in the morning. Because you know, almost no one in this church will call me at five o'clock. Five thirty. Hush. <laughs> you and Larry will get shot. I get up next early because most times behind you. My phone. But well, that's fine, so now that we know I can we turn can it off. It. <laughs> I was going to say, look out, now you're in trouble. I get up just before <coughs> Karen. And that's true. We have, we have chores we do in the house, so we get up, I get up a little earlier because I go down and do some cool things. Now I'll tell you what I do do first thing. Lord, good morning, thank you. And I go down and turn my computer on. <laughs> 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 Gotta get on Facebook. <laughs> God lives on Facebook, I'm saying. For you've been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. That's like being in his presence, being under his cloak. Let me dwell there forever. You get to that place, it doesn't make you a religious person, it makes you a person with a relationship. Amen, there you go. And again, bottom line is, you know, Get this one going, and this will happen. Rich, you'll never have to be afraid again. This one. And Angie will just, she'll wash your feet. <laughs> <laughs> Rich is going, man, I've been putting that off. <laughs> Go fly a kite, Reaper. Go fly a kite, Reaper. <laughs> No, you're not a... Oh. Oh. Isn't that sweet? Okay, young girls, are you hearing this? No. <laughs> Our matriarchs are supposed to lead the, the younger one. Good job. Can I come over? My feet are good feet. Arna <laughs> Karen. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Whatever your enemies got you get, it's your heritage. God wants to give it to you. He wants to heal you today. He wants to set you free. He wants you to come before him with thanksgiving and praise. Sometimes we can't sing praises to God because we're not in the right relationship with him. Sometimes that's when we need to praise Him most and when we're hurting the most. It's coming before Him out of a heart of gratitude and thankfulness that you're under the shelter of His wings. He wants your tears. He wants your pain. He wants your aches. He wants those things. Now we can either spend time in those things or we can give it over to Him and allow Him to move His head. Our strength is built in Christ. He strengthens us no matter how we feel. With arthritis, no matter how we feel. I bless my heart to see people come to church this morning. I know this is it's difficult. It's a difficult walk. Some of the people I've seen make this walk because they could have chosen not come. Blesses my heart. I know it's hard. I know Bernice. I see you over here. Bernice is like, oh, But it blesses my heart. It tells me that you're hungry for something. But it tells God even more. Now what are you going to do with it? Hear my cry, O oh God. Attend unto my prayer. How do you mend a broken heart? Give it to the one that can heal it. Last week, Thomas Bump said, Let your light so shine before men. What about when the light goes down? Some of us struggle with that. My light's dim. We go back to the one with the lighter. Let him light you up again. Don't get stuck in the muck. Go to God and say, Lord, set me on fire. Restore me. Put it back there. I'm being too dim to be in this world. I need you to light me up again. Hear my cry, O oh God. Make me who you want me to be, not who I think I ought to be. Lord, convict my heart to be in your word. I don't understand it all, but I'll understand what you give me out of it. First off, you got to open it and get in it. You're not going to understand it till you get in it, till you open it up. Everything in here is not that difficult. You just read a psalm. What did it say? Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. What is that? Pretty simple language. You just got to get in it. When you're hurting, 
open the middle of that Bible up and read the signs. I guarantee you you're going to find comfort. Because the psalmist might start out in a bad way, but man, he ends up praising God. That's what he wants to do today. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. Father, I thank you for this church. We all we always do. Where you brought us from. From our humble beginnings to our humble place at this point. Father, we're right where you want us to be. Help us all to just see that. Help us to know that wherever we are, you're in the midst of us. You want to carry us through. You have a plan for us. And Lord, for that we're grateful. We know that you didn't place Iron Faith Church here for no reason at all. Help us to grow. Help us to grow correctly. Help us to grow because you're growing us, not because we've become popular, but because people see Jesus in this place. It's not about promotion. It's about attraction. We want people to see you in our lives. We want transformed life. We want changed life. We want people set free. That they can walk free in this world and not be captivated by anything it offers. Speak to them. Again, we lift up the Pi Second family. We place them in your care under the shelter of your wings. For the comfort and the peace only you can give. I pray they're singing praises right now in your name. Touch lives in Jesus' name. One quick testimony as Rick's coming up here. Hey. Oh, welcome, you guys. How you doing? Nice to have you. Nice to have you, buddy. Come on in. You guys are welcome right on time. <laughs> How do you want to share a testimony so you guys know what God's Danny, doing here? Danny, stay there. Karen and I were able to take Joan Marie out for lunch, Joan Marie wedding. And they're not here. You know, weather plays a big part of them coming in. Now. Marie walks very cautiously. As we drove around the curve from their house, Karen men mentioned, and I'm not telling the story completely, I'm sure my but we drove around and we seen this field that was just full of brush, trees falling down, and Karen said something like, Boy, this is what you need to get our teens to clean this thing up. <coughs> and Joe and Marie said, Well, we own that. We have five lots in there. And then he proceeded to tell us that those lots were for Joey. They were gonna build a house there for him. So Joey's not here. You know, Joey went home and took, but you know something after here's what we prayed about and decided. If Iron Faith finds a building and whoever has that building is willing to make a reasonable deal with us, we will give you those five dollars. Wow. wow. Tell me God's not worth it. Man, if you're not what God's having to do or God has you at, man, that stuff just does not happen. That's not a oops. And for Joe and Marie, if you know Joe and Marie, they're very private people. But I'm going to tell you something. Joe just couldn't hesitate sharing that. He said, you know, he loves this church. This church has brought Joe back to life. It really has. And Marie back to life. It's been great to see them come back. 88 years old. Wow. And that guy's still pretty. He's moving on pretty good. And uh, already wants to plant our pig roast. He said, doesn't want to stop there. He said, I think we need to do a beef roast, too. He's already planting. I'm, I'm, I'm in a car with this 88-year-old man that's all pumped up just to do stuff for God and bring people in. I'm like, hear my cry, oh God, attending to my prayer. So we might think we're going through a tough time right now. We, we're coming up to this slide, but guess what? It's temporary. Amen? Amen. God's got a plan. we just got to see him in it. 